Dug a dug a dug, dug a dug a dug, dug dum a down, dug dum a down, dug dum a down, dug dum a down, dug a dug a dug a dum a down, dug dum a down, dug a down, dug dum a down, dig a dig a dig a dum, dig a dig a dig a dum, dug 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 dig a dig a dum. Timmy Turner, my name's Doug Dimmadome, owner owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome, and I would like to thank you for saving my nephew Dale Dimmadome, son of the owner of the Dale Dimmadome. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking lose <clears throat> my shit. Hey, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And I'm dead inside. <laughs> I'm <laughs> fucking dead outside soon. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> and welcome back to another episode of... Don't... Inheritance! <laughs> Oh, no, this is going to be a long episode, isn't it? Yeah. Oof. (laughs) Is that, like, even more annoying? Just a little... (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go postal. Just close your eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. And everything will be all right. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. Do it. Close your eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right, Demi, you want to give us a recap? Yeah, I kind of remember what happened. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you can't do that while I'm talking. I'm going to do it while I'm reading. I'm going to (laughs) fucking lose my shit. Demi's recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Aragon's talking to Sadbutt. Sadbutt says, Sorry, Aragon. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. And Aragon says, What? How do you not know what you're talking about? <laughs> then he talks about some shit about some mystical, magical reason he doesn't know. I don't know. And then he says, I'm possessed. Read the book page. Uh, something. I don't know. And so then Aragon just read it and then was irritated the entire time until he got to the part that was like, the Rock of Kuthian, you should have just fucking known from the beginning. If you would have read your book. <laughs> <clears throat> That's what happened. I like the uh, visualization that you just gave me of somebody being possessed going, I'm possessed. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for that. Anytime. Well, that's what I imagine, right? That he was just like, I'm possessed. <laughs> I'm going to tell you information. It's trustworthy. I'm possessed. You can trust me. Yeah, you I'm possessed. <laughs> you know you can trust information from someone who's possessed. <clears throat> it's either good or it's bad. Great. <laughs> Chapter 40. We are fucking trucking, my dude. Hot damn. Questions unanswered. More? More? Yeah, I want questions answered. (laughs) I'm sorry, but we have enough fucking unanswered questions, like the audacity. I'd rather the chapter say, unquestions answered. That's what I'm talking about. What's the opposite of a question? An (laughs) unquestion? I'd like unquestions, please. Aragon searched through Domia Aber Wyarda until he found the reference to Kuthian in the twelfth chapter. To his disappointment, all it said was that Kuthian had been one of the first writers to explore Vorengard Island. Afterward, he closed the book and s- sat staring at it, thumbing a ridge embossed across a spine. At least he's not thumbing a beard he's trying to grow. <laughs> Or fingering a beard as fingering fingering a beard. Fingering his wispy little chin hairs. Some things will never change. Oh my god. (laughs) On the cot, Sullenbum was silent as well. Do you think that the vault of Do you think that the Vault of Souls contains spirits? asked Aragon. Spirits are not souls of the dead. No, but what else could they be? Solemnbum rose from where he had been sitting and stretched, a wave of motion moving through his body from his head to his tail. If you find out, I would be interested to hear what you discover. Do you think Safira and I should go then? I cannot tell you what to do. 
If this is a trap, then most of my race has been broken and enslaved without them realizing it, and the Varden might as well surrender now, because they will never outweigh Galbatorix. If not, then this may be an opportunity to find assistance where we thought none was to be had. I cannot say. You have to decide on your own whether it is a chance worth taking. As for me, I have had enough of this mystery. <laughs> <laughs> that's Fucking like me you, too. <laughs> that's like you can do it, but I'm not. I don't really give a shit. Tell me if like something it. interesting happens. Otherwise, I don't care. Can we just see it from Solombum's perspective? It's Solombum's perspective is my perspective. <laughs> <laughs> um. Also, can I just say it's like classic fantasy story is like go back to the beginning you know where there's like this invaluable information that will help you in the present yeah and it's like oh we never would have guessed that this unending library where the fucking dragon riders began would have given us any sort of information who thought <clears throat> and it also mirrors with in the first book Solombum gave him that piece of information. We had to go back to the beginning to get information now to help us in the present. But sometimes life really do be like that. Too realistic, don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He jumped down from the cot and walked over to the opening of the tent, where he paused and glanced back at Aragon. There are many strange forces at work in Allegasia, Shade Slayer. I have seen things that defy belief. Brawl winds of light spinning in caverns deep below the ground. Men who age backward. Benjamin Button. <laughs> stones that speak and shadows that creep. Rooms that are bigger on the inside than the outside. Is this a reference to... No, I think that book was written after, maybe. It doesn't say, is that a reference to House of Leaves? Um... I don't know. I never read it. You never read that book? No. <clears throat> Everybody, drop what you're doing right now and go read. It's called House of Leaves, right? Yes. The House of Leaves. Are you sure? I mean, I'm like 98% sure that's what it's 98? called. 98? Yeah, that's it. What There's if I went and got it and it was, it's called like Dark, Dark, Dark? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that 2% that I could be wrong. <laughs> Everyone, go drop what you're doing right now. Unless you're flying a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing that. <laughs> and go read House of Leaves. It's such a good book. Galbatorx is not the only power in the world to be reckoned with, and he may not even be the strongest. Choose carefully, Shade Slayer, and if you choose to go, walk softly. And then the werecat slipped out of the tent and vanished into the darkness. Aragorn realized his breath realized <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but he's like oh whoa i'm breathing aragon released his breath like he had it in fucking capture like he captured yeah hostage or like he had it captured <laughs> Aragon released his breath and leaned back. He knew what he had. He knew what he had to do. He had to go to Vrowengard, but he could not make that decision without consulting Safira. With the <laughs> for some reason, I thought he was going to say consulting Nazawana. He just like pops in real quick while she's like hostage, and it's like, "Yo, I gotta go to Vrowengard. Do you approve?" And she's like, "What the fuck?" And he's like, "Save me." <laughs> and she, he's like, "Okay, great. Glad I got your approval. Bye." Okay, bye. She's like, "Save me. Save me." <laughs> What? Bye! I can't hear you! <laughs> I've already gone too far. With the gentle nudge of his mind, he woke her up. He woke her, and once he had assured her that nothing was amiss, he shared his memories of Solombum's visit. Her astonishment was as great as his. When he finished, she said, I do not like the thought of playing the puppet to whoever has... I do not like the thought of playing the puppet to whoever has enchanted the werecats. Neither do I. But what other choice do we have? If Galbatorix is behind this, then we'll be placing ourselves in his hands. But if we stay, then we'll be doing exactly the same, only when we arrive at Urubayan. The difference is, we would have the Varden and the elves with us. That's true. 
Silence bet- silence fell between them for a time. Then Safira said, I agree. I agree. We should go. We need longer claws and sharper teeth if we are to best Galbatorix and Shurukin in addition to Murtag and Thorn. Besides, Galbatorix expects us to rush straight to Urubu- Urubayan in hope of rescuing Nasawada. And if there is one thing that makes my scales itch, it is doing what our enemies expect. So we do the unexpected. We flee to Rowanguard. <laughs> or, you know, flee to Rowanguard. Mm-hmm. I feel like he'd be like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Aragon nodded. And if this is a trap, a soft growl sounded outside the tent. Then we will teach whoever said it to fear our names, even if it is Galbatorix. He smiled. For the first time since Naswada's abduction, he felt a sense of purposeful direction. Here was something they could do, a means by which they could influence the unfolding of events. Um, so I know, like... Instead of just sitting by a passive observer, then he said, muttered. So, I know we've, like, read, like, however many chapters, like, since she was, like, abducted, but, like, how much actual time has passed? It's been, like, a day or two, right? It can't have been long. No, I feel like it just fucking happened. Like, pretty immediately. Like, maybe it's been... Maybe 24 hours. And then it's just, like, weird when he's like, oh, for the first time since she was abducted. And I'm like, has it been weeks? Because that makes it sound like it's been a long time. Mortal chimed in and said, I think it's been a few days. But I think it's just been a few days. Okay. I just made it feel like it's been weeks. It's Aragon. Yeah. He can't sit still for more than a few minutes. Yeah, that's true. So for him, it probably feels like it's been an eternity. For him, it's been weeks. (laughs) For us, it's been a few days. In reality, it's probably been a few hours. (laughs) Arya arrived at his tent mere seconds after he contacted her. Her speed puzzled him until she explained that she had been keeping watch with Bloodgarm and the other elves, lest Murtag and Thorn return. With her there, Aragorn reached out with his mind to Glader and coaxed him into joining their conversation, though the the surly dragon was in no mood to talk. Glader? (laughs) Glader, are you there? Wait, because he's talking through an Eldenari. Mm -hmm. Glader? (laughs) Glader, are you there? You want a treat? <laughs> you good boy. You good boy, Glader. Glader. Glader, you good boy. Come here, Glader. Come on, Glader. Come oh. on. Their names seem to have turned into Glader. <laughs> <laughs> well, in dead time, it's been a month and a half. <laughs> yeah, well. Once the four of them, including Sephira, were all joined by their thoughts, Aragon finally burst out. I know where the Rock of Kuthian is. What rock is this? Glader rumbled, his tone sour. They probably woke him up. He's probably sleeping. Having a great nap. He's like, what, what rock is this? <laughs> the name seems familiar, said Arya, but I cannot place it. Aragon frowned slightly. Both of them had heard him speak of Solomon's advice before. It was not like either of them to forget. Nevertheless, Aragorn repeated the story of his encounter with Solomon and Tyrim, and when he told them about the Werecalf's most recent revelations and read them the pertinent section from the book of Domia Aberwarda, Arya tucked a strand of hair behind one of her pointed ears, speaking both with her mind and her voice. She said, "And what is this, and what is the name of this place again?" Moretta Spire. Or the Rock of Cuthian, replied Aragon in the same matter, manner. He hesitated for half a second, briefly th- thrown by her question. It's a long flight, but if Aragon and I leave forthwith, said Sephira, we can travel there and back before Varden arrive at Urubaim. This is our only chance to go. They're speaking like back and forth. Yeah. Because <clears throat> their minds are one, you know. Is our only chance to go. We'll not have the time to make the trip later on. Where would you be flying to, though? Where would you be flying to, though? Asked Glader. What? What the fuck? What do you mean? Exactly what I said, the dragon growled. 
the field of his mind darkening for all your yammering, you've yet to tell us where this mysterious thing is located. I have, though, said Aragon, bewildered. It's on Vroengard Island. At last, a straightforward answer. What is going on? Well, has nah. he told them it's been on Vroengard at all? He's just been saying, Rock of Cuthian, Rock of Cuthian. Well, I don't know. Also, what You're if... like, I don't know. You're the one reading. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. You're the one listening. <laughs> no, I was going to say, like, I'm sure we didn't get the whole fucking spiel. What if the information's enchanted? You can see little Isaac's little head down there. Yeah, look at him. He's stinky. What if the information's enchanted so they just keep forgetting? Hmm, that's a good theory. You want to write it up on the board? No, because we're about to figure out in five seconds. Yeah. A frown creased Arya's brow. But what would you do on Rowan Guard? I don't know, said Aragon, his temper rising. He, debater, he debated whether it was worth confronting later about his remarks. The dragon seemed to be needling Aragon on purpose. It depends on what we find. Once we're there, we'll try to open the Rock of Cuthian and discover whatever secrets it contains. If it's a trap, he shrugged. Then we'll fight. Ar Arya's expression grew increasingly troubled. The Rock of Cuthian. The name seems weighted with significance, but I cannot say why. It echoes in my mind like a song I once knew but have since forgotten. She shook her head and put her hands to her temples. Ah, now it's gone. She looked up. Forgive me. What were we speaking of? Going to Vroengard, <laughs> Aragon said slowly. <laughs> He's like, did you get real stupid in the last five <laughs> minutes? <laughs> He's like, I was kind of thought I was smarter than you, Arya, but now you're really proving <laughs> it. <laughs> Confirmed. Ah, uh, yes. But for what purpose? You're needed here, Aragon. In any case, nothing of value remains on Vroengard. Aye, said Glader. It is a dead and abandoned place. After the, after the destruction of Doru Areba, the few of us who had escaped returned to search for anything that might be of use. But the Forestworn had already picked the runes clean. Arya nodded. Whatever put this idea in your head in the first place? I don't understand how you could believe deserting the Varden now, when they're at their most vul vulnerable, could possibly be wise. And for what? To fly to the far ends of Alagazia without cause or reason? I had thought better of you. You cannot just leave because you are uncomfortable with your new situation, Aragon. Aragon decoupled his mind from Arya and Glader and signaled to Sephira to do the same. They don't remember. They can't remember. It is magic. Deep magic. Like the spell that hides the names of the dragons who betrayed the riders. But you haven't forgotten about the Rock of Cuthian, have you? Of course not, she said, her mind flashing green with peak. P-I-Q-U-E? Piku? Piku? <laughs> Piku? Peak? <clears throat> hey, Google. How do you pronounce P-I-Q-U-E? That's pronounced peak. Holy shit. And I saw Mortal said, I said it right. I oh, fucking wow. did it right the first time. Am I learning how to read? Holy shit. You guys all heard it here first. Dad's learning how to read. <laughs> guys, I am learning how to read. I know all 25 letters of the alphabet. Great. <laughs> um, what does peak mean? I don't know that word. Hey, Google. Define peak. P-I-Q-U-E. Ooh, yeah, Ooh. Well, she's... Okay. That's how I feel all the time. <laughs> the time any, anybody says anything... Peak. I do like that description. It's nice, short, concise, and if you know the word, makes mm -hmm. it makes it a good, good literary descriptive sentence. Of course not, she said. Her mind flashing green with peak. Boom. How, like, he was able to describe a lot going mm. on in. Six words. Ooh, my leg fell asleep. It's weird that he's, like, associating the word green with annoyance. Because green is not a creative color. 
Green is not a creative color. How could I when we are so closely joined? A sense of vertigo gripped Aragon as he considered the implications. In order to be effective, the spell would have to erase the memories of everyone who knew about the rock in the first place, and also the memories of anyone who heard or read about it thereafter, which means the whole of Alagazia is in the thrall of this enchantment. No one can escape its reach. Except for us, he agreed. And the werecats. And perhaps Galbatorix. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Aragon shivered. It felt as if spiders made of ice crystals were crawling up and down his spine. The size of the deception astounded him and left him feeling small, vulnerable, to cloud the minds of elves, dwarves, humans, and dragons alike, and without arousing the slightest hint of suspicion, was a feat so difficult he doubted it could have been accomplished by a deliberate application of craft. Rather, he believed it would have only have been done by instinct, for such a spell would be far too complicated to put into words. Hmm. He had to know who was responsible for manipulating the minds of everyone in Allegazi and why. If it was Galbatorix, then Aragon feared that Salimbum was right and the Varden's defeat was inevitable. Do you think this was the work of the dragons, as was the banishing of the names, he asked? Saphira was slow to answer. Perhaps. But then as Salimbum said to you, there are many powers in Allegazia. Until we go to Vrongard, we won't know for certain one way or another. If ever we do. Aye. Aragon ran his fingers through his hair. He suddenly felt exceptionally tired. Why does everything have to be so hard, he wondered. <laughs> Same. Because, wow. said Sephira, everyone wants to eat, but no one wants to be eaten. He snorted, grimly amused. Hmm. It's kind of like, everyone wants a cake, but no one wants to be a baker. Well, not no one, but... Mostly no one. <clears throat> I get it. Wow. Everyone wants to eat, but no one wants to be eaten. That could be like a good line for, or a good like um, inspirational quote for entrepreneurs. Hmm. People that are like doing their own businesses. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to eat, no one wants to be eaten. I'm going to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> That was like the cutest way you could possibly say you're going to eat anybody. I'm going to eat them. <laughs> Despite the speed with which he and Safira could exchange thoughts, their conversation had lasted long enough for Arya and Glader to notice. <clears throat> I don't imagine them exchanging thoughts quick. I think they're just like staring at each other like. Every time with the mind speak, I just imagine it's like. To everyone, like, outside of it with the magic mind thing and all of that, I just imagine it's just, like, really weird and awkward. I also just imagine, like, <clears throat> Aragon just standing there and kind of, like, going cross-eyed <laughs> and just, like, staring off into space. And they're like, see, okay. <laughs> see, they doing okay. <laughs> Safira going cross-eyed, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Why have you closed your minds to us? Asked Arya. Her gaze flicked toward one wall of the tent. The wall nearest to where Sephira lay curled in the darkness beyond. Is something wrong? You seem perturbed, Glader added. Aragon stifled a humorless chuckle. <laughs> or just a panic response. <laughs> That's all laughing is. Perhaps because I am. Arya watched with concern as he went over to the cot and sat on the edge. He let his arms hang... He let his arms hang limp and heavy between his legs. He was silent for a moment as he made the shift from the language of his birth to that of the elves and magic, whereupon he said, Do you trust Saphira and me? The resulting pause was gratifyingly brief. <laughs> I do, replied Arya, Arya, also in the ancient language. As do I, Glader likewise said. Oh, gratifyingly brief, okay. So they were like, I do. Not like... I do. Yep. yep. Sure. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> shall I or shall you? Aragon quickly asked Safira. You want to tell them, so tell them. Aragon looked up at Arya, then still in the ancient language. He said to both her and Glader, 
Solenbaum has told me the name of a place, a place on Vroengard, where Saphira and I may find someone or something to help us defeat Galbatorix. However, the name is enchanted. Every time I say the name, you soon forget it. A faint expression of shock appeared on Arya's face. Do you believe me? I believe you, Arya slowly said. I believe that you believe what you are saying, Glader growled, but that does not necessarily make it so. I was like, he just said it in the ancient language, so obviously he's not, like, lying about it. Yeah, well... He at least believes it to be true. Yeah. That's what Glader is saying, is, like, you believe it to be true, but you're also a fucking idiot. Glader is, like, low-key being like, I don't believe it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't buy it. How else can I prove it? You won't remember if I tell you the name... Or share my memories with you. You could question Solombum, but again, what good would it do you? What good? For one, we can prove that you haven't been tricked or deceived by something that only appeared to be Solombum. And as for the spell, there may be a way to demonstrate its existence. Summon the Werecat, and then we shall see what can be done. Will you? Aragon asked Saphira. He thought the Werecat would be more likely to come if Saphira asked him. I mean, he did make the comment like, I'm not some mongrel you can summon <laughs> <laughs> that was a line from Pirates of the Caribbean oh, I almost said Sea of Thieves god damn god damn god damn god damn, god damn. <laughs> a, moment, a moment later he felt her searching with her mind through the camp and then he sensed a touch of Solombum's consciousness against Saphira's after she and the werecraft exchanged a brief wordless communication Saphira announced he is on his way they waited in silence Aragon staring down at his hands as he compiled a list of supplies he would need for the trip to Vroengard. When Solombum pushed aside the flaps to the tent and entered. You know what though? Like, <clears throat> Aragon really never does sit still or like stop thinking about shit. Mm-hmm. They're like waiting for Solombum to show up and he's like, all right, so I'm going to need gloves. I'm going to need water. I'm going to need probably some fresh fuzzy socks. I'm going to need a belt. I'm going to need, because I lost both the belt. The wise. Do, need... Does anyone ever like stop thinking though? So, well, he's remaining in action, and mm-hmm. Christopher P- Paolini shows that he's remaining in mm-hmm. action, but also he remains in like constructive action, you know? Yeah. For like the, the for like almost this entire series, whenever he's like thinking about stuff, it's not like, "Wow, Arya really is beautiful," and he's just kind of like, "I wonder what Solombum's gonna say. I wonder what Glader's gonna ask Solombum." Like he writes that little thing, and that like. Aragon's not just sitting there, a void character, devoid of anything, mm-hmm. that he's like, okay, so for my trip for Vroen Guard, I'm going to need. Mm-hmm. And he's like already planning it out. That's pretty good. I feel like... I'm just trying to focus on the positive. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I was literally just going to say, I don't hate Aragon. I am annoyed by some of his character traits and I feel like everyone wants to like get up my ass about it. But it's like, you cannot tell me in real life there is a person you like that you aren't sometimes annoyed by their character traits. Yeah, I would also say um, that you also focus, you comment on the negative more than you comment on the positive audibly. Yeah. You're more of a, what the type of person than a I really like that like I, I feel like internally you go good <laughs> but externally like audibly you're like bad bad well yeah because it's sort of like I guess the like no news is good news kind of a thing you know what I mean where like I'm just not going to say anything because nothing is I'd rather just have you say everything say it oh, okay Oh, okay. Good. (laughs) Good. So, we were at a Mm -hmm. (laughs) drive-thru. Story time! (laughs) So, we were at a drive-thru, and the person was, like, giving us our card back and everything, and um, was like, have a good night! And Demi just went, good! (laughs) (laughs) Because I was, like, I was talking to her as, like, the transaction was taking place. Mm-hmm. And we were like in a conversation, and then the person was just like, "All right, have a good night." And then Demi just goes, "Good." Uh, I mean, have a good night. <laughs> I literally just put my hand, I face, I 
physically yeah, face went, palmed and I go, I don't know why I said that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Uh, have a good night. <laughs> good. Good. Why the fuck did I do that? I don't know. I'm sure that guy got a good fucking kick out of it, though. He probably forgot about it after we left. No, he probably was laughing. No, I think that's funny. Like, if someone came up to me and I said, have a good night, and they just go good, and they go... I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I said that. I think he would probably be more apt to remember it because you, like, smacked your forehead and went, I don't know why I said that. Like it Instead was of just fucking... driving off and be like, mm, gotta go, <laughs> gotta go. When Solomon pushed aside the flaps to the tent and entered, Aragorn was surprised to see that he was now in his human form, that of a young boy, dark-eyed and insolent. In his left hand, the werecat held a leg of roast goose, on which he was gnawing. A ring of grease coated his lips and chin, and drops of melted fat had splattered his bare chest. What a fucking little animal child. <laughs> but also, I was just thinking, you could get a turkey leg at a rent fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I could go for one. Oh, uh, okay. This description's making me hungry. Are we going to go get food? Pizza? Yeah. Scared Potter? <laughs> you wish. <laughs> as he chewed on as he chewed as he chewed on a strip of flesh, Solombo motioned with his sharp pointed chin toward the patch of dirt where Glader's heart of hearts lay buried. What is it you want, fire breather? He asked. He seems like really cool right now. Like all of a sudden he seems really fucking cool. Like he's like a weird like little Neverland kid. So he's like actually like a, like a Peter Pan adult. Yeah. But he's like also kind of like a shitty like grungy looking little kid. And he's just sitting there like chewed on a haunch of meat. And he's like, what do you want? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But he's got like kind of that like where he's like leaned back and he's got his like hip cock type of pose, you know, mm -hmm. that like classic cool guy pose. I'm getting good vibes from Soul and Bum. <laughs> Great vibes. To know if you are who you seem to be, said Glader, and the dragon's consciousness seemed to surround Solemn Bums, pressing inward like piles of black clouds around a brightly burning but wind-battered flame. The dragon's strength was immense, and from personal experience, Aragon knew that few could hope to withstand him. With a gargled yowl, Solemn Bums spout out his mouthful of meat and sprang backward as if he had stepped on a viper. He stood where he was then, trembling with effort, his sharp teeth bared, and a look of such fury in his tawny eyes, Aragon placed his hand on the hilt of Brisinger as a as a precaution. The flame dimmed but held a white hot point of light amid a sea of churning thunderheads. After a minute, the storm diminished and the clouds withdrew, although they did not disappear entirely. My apologies, Werecat, said Glader, but I had to know for certain. Solemn Bum hissed, <laughs> and the hair on his head fluffed and spiked, so that it resembled the blossom of a thistle. Hmm. If you still had your body, old one, I would cut off your tail for that. You, little cat, you could not have done more than scratch me. Again, Solemn Bum hissed, and then he turned on his heel and stalked toward the entrance, his shoulders hunched close to his ears. Wait, said Glader. Did you tell Aragon about this place on Vrogengard? This place of secrets that none can remember? The werecat paused, and without turning around, he growled and brandished the goose leg over his head as an impatient, dismissive gesture. I did. And did you tell him the page in Domia Aberwarda wherein he found the location of this place? So it seems, but I have no memory of it, and I hope that whatever is on Vrongard singes your whiskers and burns your paws. The entrance to the tent made a loud flapping sound as Solombum swatted it aside, then his small form melted into the shadows as if he had never existed. Hmm. I just feel like... What an interaction. That was, like, aggressive. The whole thing. Like, the whole way through. <clears throat> I feel like they could have, like, warned him. Well, I guess they couldn't warn yeah. him because if he's, like, an illusion by Gabletorix, you don't want to warn him. But mm -hmm. I feel like... <clears throat> I feel like if he was a spy or something like that, right? 
than calling him to the tent where Glader is and Arya is in mm -hmm. like a little private meeting is trigger enough to any spy to be on the defensive. Yeah. So if he can deter, if Glader can determine that it is a Werecat, like 100%, then it does no harm to like give him a warning. You know? Mm hmm Unless it's, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's like, all I have to do is surround you with my mind and I can find out if you're aware cut or not because of the feel it like, cause like I could, I can tell it from a magical illusion mm -hmm. and like if Galbatorix is like that skilled, then it doesn't really matter anyway because like he's just that fucking skilled. So like I'm, I have to do this and if he refuses and you're going to piss him off anyway. So I mean, probably better to just not give him a heads up because then he doesn't have a heads up to do anything. I guess, I mean, I guess he did say, like, sorry about that after, I don't know, where cats are, like, temperamental, like, real cats. Hmm, interesting. Like, you have to handle them a little bit differently. Aragon stood, and with the toe of his boot, pushed the scrap of half-eaten meat out of the tent. You should not have been so rough with him, said Arya. I had no other choice, said Glader. Didn't you? You could have asked his permission first. And give him the opportunity to prepare? No, it is done. Let it be, Arya. I cannot. His pride is wounded. You should you should attempt to placate him. It would be dangerous to have a werecat as your enemy. Ooh. See? Fucking Arya me. Same wavelength. Glader and you, same wa wavelength. <laughs> Hell yeah. It is even more dangerous to have a dragon as your enemy. Let it be, Elfling. <laughs> 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 Troubled. You're the tiniest dragon in the world. <laughs> the audacity. <laughs> Troubled, Aragon exchanged looks with Arya. Glader's tone bothered him, and her as well. He could see, but Aragon could not decide what to do about it. Now, Aragon, the dragon said, the golden dragon said, Will you allow me to examine the memories of your conversation with Solombum? If you want, but why? You'll only end up forgetting, perhaps. And then again, perhaps not. We shall see. Addressing, Arya, Glader said, Separate your mind from others, and do not allow Aragorn's memories to taint your consciousness. As you wish, Glader, Elda. As Arya spoke, the music of her thoughts grew ever more distant. A moment later, the eerie singing faded to silence. Then Glader returned his attention to Aragorn. Show me, he commanded. Ignoring his trepidation, Aragorn cast his mind back to when Solombum had first arrived at the tent, and he carefully recalled everything that had transpired between the two of them thereafter. Glader's consciousness melded with Aragorn's so that the dragon could relive the experiences along with him. It was an unsettling sensation. It felt as if he and the dragon were two images stamped onto the same side of a coin. When he finished, Glader withdrew somewhat from Aragorn's mind, and then to Arya said, When I have forgotten, if I do, repeat to me the words, Andume and fur on moss at the hill of sorrows and their flesh like glass this place on vrongard i know of it or i once did it was something of importance something the dragon's thoughts grayed for a second as if a layer of mist had been blown over the hills and valleys of his being obscuring them well <laughs> he demanded <laughs> regaining his former brisk attitude uh. why do we tarry aragon Show me your memories. I already have. Even as Glader's mood turned to disbelief, Arya said, Glad Glader, remember, Andume and Faronmas at the Hill of Sorrows and their flesh like glass. How Glader started, and then he growled with such force, Aragon almost expected to hear the sound out loud. Ah, oh, I hate spells that interfere with one's memory. They're the worst form of magic always leading to chaos and confusion. Half the time they seem to end with family members killing one another without realizing it. What the fuck? What does the phrase you used mean, Sephira asked? Nothing, except to me and Oramis. But that was the point. No one would know of it unless I told them. Arya sighed. So the spell is real. I suppose you have to go to Vrongard then. To ignore something of this importance would be folly. If nothing else... We need to know who the spider is at the center of this web. 
I shall go as well, said Glader. If someone means to harm you, they may not expect to fight two dragons instead of one. In any event, you will need a guide. Vroengard has become a dangerous place since the destruction of the riders, and I would not have you fall prey to some forgotten evil. Aragorn hesitated as he noticed a strange yearning in Arya's gaze, and he realized that she wanted to accompany them as well. Saphira will fly faster if she only has to carry one person, he said in a quiet voice. I know. Only, I always wanted to visit the home of the riders. I'm sure you will. Someday. She <laughs> nodded. Someday. But not with me. Girl, I ride solo. Dude, he's so over her shit. Aragorn took a moment to marshal his energy and reflect on everything that needed to be done before he, Sphere, and Glader could leave. Then he drew a deep breath and rose from the cot. Captain Garvin, he called. Will you please join us? Wow. Um, I was really worried at the title of the unanswered questions that we were going to have unanswered questions, but it turned out it was just... Glader and Arya, <laughs> get fucked! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that that existed. You were about to do it. Yeah, I was. I was going to go, bow, 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 but. I hate that it vibrates your phone also. This is so loud. It doesn't actually vibrate it. Oh, no, it does. Never mind. I bet I could turn the vibrate off. Who can say da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Should we show that TikTok? Yeah. All right. So Demi shared a TikTok to me, and it explains our personalities perfectly. Roll that shit, editor. What's the name of our editor again? Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a name of the editor, remember? What's the name of our editor? Dylan. Dylan? Jacob. Jacob? I don't know. Wasn't that a great clip? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what are your thoughts on the chapter? You're glad... God, we're... The, we got questions answered, mm -hmm. and now there's some momentum f moving forward. They're they're on a mission to go to Vroengard, home of the riders. That'll be cool to experience. I'm excited about it because we heard about it a long time ago. Correct. Um, I'm wondering like what's gonna be there because Glader was like, "Yo, there's some." shady shit going on because that's how he talks you know <laughs> <laughs> um but like what's happening there like it was destroyed it's rubble is it just like spooky creatures that are taking over or is it spooky magic i don't know maybe both maybe both maybe spooky magic creatures um i really liked that glader made a comment about how much he hates memory forgetting magic because that was about to piss me off because like how frustrating that it's like you don't even remember that you don't remember and i hate that yeah i wonder <clears throat> if there was another way that they could have done that i feel like they could have had aria witness glader saying Show me, like, show me your memory or something, and then Aragon being like, "Okay, I showed you my memory," and him being like, "Okay," and then like repeat the memory, and mm -hmm. then when Glader, like, didn't remember, then Arya's like, "Examine my memory," and mm -hmm. then she could see, or then he could see the interaction of him, mind talking with Aragon, and then them having the conversation, and then him like faltering and forgetting mm -hmm. because the magic is specifically around. The Rock of Kuthian. It's probably like a trigger, like Rock of Kuthian. You just like start to forget stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if Arya would have witnessed the interaction and then Glader would have written, witnessed him being witnessed, <laughs> witness me, and then forgetting, then it, 
you know, mm -hmm. then he would have been like, oh, fuck. And then he would have remembered that part of that memory and then been like, okay, so we just can't talk about it. So then that's when they could go around talking about the Rock of Kuthian, but still have an idea of like what Aragon's doing. Mm -hmm. Could say, like Arya's like, it seems like you have to go to Rowengard now because he's like, I have to go to a rock or I have to go to a place mm -hmm. on Rowengard. And that was able to like stick in their memory. So it's weird. They could talk about it in a roundabout way. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's kind of what they're doing. Yeah. But I don't know. I just liked because I was like feeling frustrated about the memory forgetting thing because I'm like, it's just so irritating. Like for them as like the characters, I guess, not like I'm being me as like a shithead. You know what I mean? I'm just like, wow, that magic is very frustrating. And then Glader is just like, wow, that's really frustrating. Especially like an unknown memory altering magic. Mm -hmm. Because with the dragons of the Forsworn, that was a very intentional thing. Yeah. Where everybody knew about it. Well, at least, I mean, like in the moment, every, everybody knew that they were erasing the dragon's names. And that, like, the reason you don't know the dragons' names is because we erased their names from existence. But, like, this is, like, an unknown memory-altering spell. So, Glader is, like, trying to, like... Ink it's almost like dementia. Yeah. That's He's, like, trying to like. engage in this conversation. He's like, I lost it. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, I'm interested to see, like, what happens when they go to rowan guard as far as like the forgetting magic goes like that's weird and also why does aragon not forget and also how do the werecats like how is questions unanswered son of a bitch but you know what i mean like how is aragon and Saphir? like how are they able to remember also how is how are the werecats as a whole able to remember the rock of kuthian's name when it seems like Arya and Glader both. <laughs> well, the Solomon said the Werecats were entrusted with the information to pass it down. Okay. And I think, yeah. I can't remember if he said he knew who it was from or if he couldn't figure it out. He didn't know who it was from. But the information is just passed down through the Werecats. So they were entrusted by whatever, Mystery. whoever did this to pass it down to whoever they thought should know. So I wonder if there's when a were cat tells you, mm -hmm. then you remember. Oh, maybe. Enchantment to it. And then it's like, well, why didn't Solomon just tell Glader and Arya then? Dude, he doesn't know how the magic works. Maybe he doesn't know. But then what if the magic didn't work and Aragorn just would have forgot anyway? <laughs> <laughs> then roll credits. That's how the enchantment has to work is that when a were cat tells you, you remember. Yeah, you're probably right. What else to even say? I'm just excited that we're going to maybe find out some, like, cool stuff, maybe. And also, maybe some sort of, like, a beginning to understand how they're even going to beat Galvatorix. Because he kind of seems a little bit um, invincible at the moment. Definitely not invincible, but insanely strong. I mean, well, right now there's, like, really nothing they can do. He, like, seems as, like, invulnerable as, like, Negan first seemed in The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. But then there's always a weakness, and they're going to... Hopefully, yeah. Broengard gives them that weakness. Well, right. Like, yeah, there's always a weakness, but I think there's the fear of the unknown because it's, like, we don't know what the weakness is. So, like, he doesn't have one at the current moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, 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 and he's been hoarding magic, mag, magic, <laughs> magic knowledge for centuries now. Mm -hmm. So he definitely seems like the big bad, tough, bad, bad, good, bad guy that you can't fucking beat. And hopefully, Vrongard gives them some sort of direction. Yeah, because I kind of feel like. Because I know everyone's like, oh, like you were asking like, oh, like, how do you think they're going to defeat Cal Galbatorx? And I'm like, literally, I couldn't even. Literally? Literally, I couldn't even fathom a way. Like with what they have right now, like 
the Varden by themselves could do absolutely nothing. <clears throat> like literally, literally without Aragon and Saphira, they have no chance. Yeah, with especially with them with Galbatorx now having Murtag. Mm -hmm. Murtag could probably almost wipe out the entire Varden with whatever power Galbatorx could give him mm -hmm. by himself. And that's not even saying what Galbatorx could do. I also kind of feel like Murtag and Thorn seem kind of like OP. Like, I almost feel like, and I know Aragorn's like really strong and we've kind of already talked about that he's probably stronger than Murtag. But it feels like every, it seems like Murtag is maybe more strategic than Aragorn in some ways. Also, Murtag was bathed in blood. Like, from his adolescence mm -hmm. to his adulthood years, well, I yeah. guess his teenage years, he was always fighting, learning how to fight, sword strategy. Yeah, so I guess in that way, I feel like he has, like, a little bit of an upper hand on Aragon. Because I feel like right now in the story, like, I feel a little bit hopeless, I guess. Because I'm like, I don't know. Like, unless there's some kind of fucking ex machina, I don't know what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause, okay, cool. They have a magic <clears throat> dart that literally didn't do anything to Thorn. Great. Well, didn't they like miss or something? No, it hit him in his tail or something. Yeah, it hit him in his tail, but I get still stabbed him. But then like he flung Arya off or something like she fucked up. You I don't know? know. I guess it just kind of feels like every time they try something, it doesn't work and i'm just like i don't know where the fuck this story is gonna go i know they're like ex machina is gonna come in oh we have magic information power now we're gonna defeat yabba Torx. and i feel like that's what's gonna happen and we're all gonna live happily ever after because it's a children's book but like i'm just like what's like i don't know i don't know you know what i mean if i remember correctly you know how i was like 1984 you're gonna be mad at the ending but, like, you, like, love mad. You, like, love hate it, you know? You're, like, that's such a horrible ending. But, like, I get it. And I hate it because it's such a fitting ending. Yeah. Like, you're going to hate this for a completely different way. Oh, my fuck. If I hate it because it's predictable, I'm going to puke. Mm, not predictable. If I remember correctly, it ends really lame. I remember reading the ending and being, like, that's where you that's that's what you chose to go with yeah so is, am i am i gonna be mad because disappointment mad i swear to god I swear <laughs> we're gonna to do that god. thing where we just recreate the story and just believe a different way that's what we'll do just create a headcanon and say that's it yeah because didn't we do that with something else or with this series already didn't we do something where like this is headcanon and then that's like what we decided to believe. Or was it a TV show? We did that with something. We did do that with something. And now I don't remember. Oh, fuck. Do you think it had a spell on it? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. I'll think of it probably when it doesn't matter. If, uh, if anybody remembers what we did that with, let us know in the comment section below. Because I, I could have sworn it was something with Aragon that we decided, like, we're just going to believe that that's headcanon. And, like, that's know. how it's going to be. So, what if everyone, what if people start to comment it and then they all forget? Because oh it's, like, magic. Stop. Freya, oh. did, you, did you put a spell on us? She is zonked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Drop that comment. Let us know because we're fucked up now because of it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. Oh my God, what was it? That is so jarring. I hate it. It's six. It's six? It's six. I'm hungry. <laughs>